We in classes today. It's a chill day. Hey everyone, it's me Wendy and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about sewing space hacks. One of the first things I recommend is trying to set aside a space that is specifically designated towards sewing and in that space I'm gonna show you five things you can do to make your life easier. Number one, tape your tape. And what I mean by that is that you should take clear tape, like scotch tape, and tape your measuring tape to the edge of the table. For all the measuring that happens during sewing, I find it easiest to just have a piece of tape along the edge that you can bring fabric to, measure it quickly, and cut. You don't have to lift it on and off the table or stretch it out. It's there, ready, and waiting for you. Number two, there's a lot of standard sewing supplies. And I actually have a link in the description that shows different materials that you should buy before you start sewing. But something that's not really sold as a sewing room supply is a lint roller and Swiffer cloths. Ever since I got a lint roller, I use it so much while I'm sewing. It's a really easy way to clean up fabric. Say you have like all this dust and random crap sitting on your fleece, just wipe it all off. As well, while you're sewing, sometimes you'll look down and realize you've been like drowning in lint. You can just roll it all off, it's very easy. And then the Swiffer cloth, those ones are really useful for cleaning up dust and mess on non-fabric surfaces. When you're cutting and sewing fabric, dust just like starts to fly everywhere it gets on your table like computers or whatnot is in the area in your sewing machine and so i grab a swiffer cloth wipe the whole thing down and it gets rid of all the dust the next issue that a lot of people who <laughs> sew deal with is the growing pile of fabric that accumulates. Some of it's untouched, you just never got around to making a project. Some of it you got tricked into buying somehow, it was like super pretty or it was on sale, but you didn't have something in mind for it and you just hoped future you would come up with something wonderful. And then some of it is like that half yard remnant where you feel bad throwing it out, but then you actually have no idea what to do with so little fabric. One of the things I do is I organize all of my fabric based on its season. Anything that is a summery fabric all goes in one area, and anything that's a wintry fabric all goes in another area. That way, when I open up the summery fabric, I'll see all the different inspiration that I had from before, and I might actually pick something from there instead of going to buy something new. And then when it's winter time, go over to the winter side and see what's over there. It's important to separate them because in the winter, you're not gonna be thinking about like oh wow this silk is so nice I should make a summer dress and in the summer you don't want to be opening up boxes full of fleece and heavy knit keeping them together by season helps it to make sure that you don't forget about them number four this one relates to how to make your sewing time as rich as possible. I used to listen to music or watch YouTube videos on the side. Either it's distracting or I guess the music can get a bit repetitive. But one thing I've really, really enjoyed lately is listening to podcasts. When you're sewing, you can be working and you can be like enriching your mind. I've mentioned this before in another video and some people asked about my favorite podcast. I probably listen to Girl Boss and Startup the most. I'll include below all the ones that I recommend. And lastly, number five, if you can situate your sewing space near a wall, I highly, highly recommend this. I've made a more and more active effort over the years to get my supplies onto the wall. Scissors, thread, different crafting supplies. It makes it so that it's easy to reach, but then it's not sitting on your table or sitting on the floor or sitting on your chair. So I got this pegboard, which you can pick up at any hardware lumber type of store. I painted it white just to help it match my room a little bit more. Put in two nails at the top along with a little bit of those felt pads on the back so that it wouldn't knock against the wall. And then put in a whole system of hooks to help me arrange all of my tools. These baskets were from the dollar store and I love them so much. They're really good for holding things that don't really have something they can hook with. And I picked up these little binder clips which were a really helpful way to display all the different elastics and little notions that I still need to use. What really got me going with setting up this pegboard was actually receiving this pink toolkit. These are from Apollo Tools and they're actually part of a Rethink Breast Cancer partnership with a lot of different other brands and I found out their proceeds are all designed to fund informing young people about breast cancer awareness. If you or someone close to you has experience with or or has gone through breast cancer, they actually have a shop with care package items for those that are working through that in their life. I'll put a link in the description for you and hopefully it's helpful if you or someone you love is suffering due to cancer. That's a wrap on my five sewing hacks. It's only five, so I'm sure there's a lot of other really good ones out there. If you've got more tricks up your sleeve, comment below, let me know how you make sewing easier, faster, more fun. And if you don't want to miss out on any of my future tutorials, you are welcome to subscribe. I hope you all have a really good week and I'll see you next time. Bye. Come with a set of instructions so you don't know how to handle.
Hey. <laughs>